Hi, I'm Hong Jin, and now I will present our work entitled Detecting False Alarms from Automatic Static Analysis Tools. How far are we? The context of our work are the warnings produced by static analyzers such as fine bugs. A static analyzer runs on a project. Given the source code or byte code, the static analyzer produces warnings which represents possible bugs. These warnings are then presented to the developer for further inspection. For example, given this piece of code, running a, st a static analyzer would, would generate warnings that indicate there are, that there are multiple locations where there could be now pointer the references. And the developer can then inspect these warnings to determine if they represent real bugs or not. Because there are no guarantees that the warnings pre uh, found by static analyzers are real bugs. In other words, warnings can either be actionable warnings or could be false alarms. It is not desirable that a static analyzer produces many false alarms because this would waste the developer's time and effort. And prior work in the liter literature has found that a high false alarm rate is a barrier to adoption. In this context, false alarms do not only refer to mistakes from the over approximation of static analysis, but they also refer to warnings that developers do not act on. For example, developers may not act on warnings if they think that the a bug fix is too risky. A line of research aims to address the problem of the high false alarm rate by filtering warnings through machine learning. This research aims to put a classifier in between the warnings and the developers. The classifier acts as a binary classifier. For each warning, it would, pre it would predict if the warning is a false alarm or if it's an actionable warning. If it is a false alarm, then the warning is discarded. And as such, the developer would only inspect warnings that are likely to be actionable warnings, saving the developer's time and effort. In order to train a machine learning classifier, a labeled data set is required. So one way to do so is to have a training revision where we would collect the warnings that are present at this revision. We would then compute the features for each warning. And as we also need the labels in order to train a machine learning classifier, we would then have a warning oracle that is used to generate the, the, the labels for the, for the data set. And now we have a labeled data set and we can pass the labeled data set to the classifier which can be trained. Now at runtime, when we wish to use the classifier to filter warnings, we would then use we will follow a similar procedure of collecting the warnings at a usage time and then collect the compute the features for each warning. And then the warnings and the features can then be passed to the classifier. There's been a large volume of work proposing different features for this task. And the prior work by Wang et al has identified 23 golden features. These 23 golden features are the most important features out of over 100 features. Subsequent, subsequently, Young et al. replicated their work and they also found that with the golden features, any machine learning technique worked well. In particular, they recommended the use of an SVM due to its low cost and high effectiveness. In their experiments, the golden features with the SVM performs well, achieving up to 96% recall and 99.5% AUC. Here are the golden features. Very broadly, we could think of the golden features as features that are related to the code and the warning and the history of the code and warning. For example, we could extract the code to comment ratio or the method visibility as the features that are related to the code. And we could also compute the amount of lines of code added in, in a particular file in the past 25 revisions. These would be features that, that, are, that represent some aspect of the code history. Related to the warning, we could extract features such as the warning type, warning pattern. And in particular, an interesting class of features are the warning context features. So these warning context features are features that capture the proportion of actionable warnings in a given context. And a context could be a, a method or a file. And this, this, uh, the intuition here is that if we have seen a given context such as a method, where developers used to free historically fix bugs in, if we see a new warning that it appears in the same context, such as the method, it would seem likely that developers would want to fix the warning. 
In order to form our experiments and to construct a labelled dataset, we will need a warning oracle to determine the ground truth labels. In prior work, a heuristic was used to determine the ground truth labels for each warning. A heuristic involves the comparison of warnings at a given revision, say the training revision, against a reference revision that is set chronologically in the future of both the training and the testing revision. To determine if a warning is actionable or not, we would compare and see if a warning that was present at the given revision is still present at the reference revision or not. An open warning would refer to a warning that was present at the given revision and is still present at the reference revision. And in prior work, it was assumed that open warnings are false alarms. On the other hand, a closed warning refers to warnings that were present at a given revision and is no longer present at the reference revision even though the source file is still present. Prior work assumed that closed warnings are, are actionable warnings. In this study, we claim that a desirable warning oracle has three properties. Firstly, the warning oracle should enable the construction of a large data set. Secondly, a warning oracle should be reliable and the labels produced should be robust to minor changes in the parameters of the oracle. Thirdly, the labels derived through the warning oracle should agree with labels that are derived through a human oracle, such as a human annotators or developers. This brings us to our research questions. We investigate two questions in total in, the, in, this, in this piece of work. Our first question is about the effectiveness of the golden features. We wish to understand, better understand the effectiveness of the golden features and to do so, we analyze the contribution of each individual feature to a sample of, class of predictions produced by an SVM using the golden features. Our second research question is about the use of the heuristic as the warning oracle, and we wish to understand how suitable is it. While the heuristic can, con can be used to construct a large data set, prior work did not investigate its reliability and the level of agreement of its labels with labels annotated by human oracles. To start off, we replicated the previous study by making use of the data set and the replication packages that were available, that were made available by the, the previous papers. And using an SVM with the golden features, we obtained strong performance. We averaged an F, average F1 of 0 0.88 and an AUC of 1.0. Next, we used LIME to investigate the, the, the golden features SVM. LIME is a technique from the field of artif uh, explainable artificial intelligence that seeks to produce explanations for each prediction in terms of the features that were used. So by using LIME, we can understand and determine what are the most important features that contribute to the individual predictions. And out of 50 sampled predictions, we find that the warning context features are always among the top features. And therefore, we investigate the, the, the warning context features. So just, to just as a reminder, the warning context features are features that are based on the proportion of actionable warnings within a given context, such as a method. And we find an issue re related to the, the, the way that the, these features are computed. So in order to compute the value of these features, we would first collect the warnings for a given context, say a method, and then we would next need to, need to compute what proportion of these warnings are actionable. And to determine if a warning is actionable, we would compare the, against the warnings at a reference revision. If a warning is not, was initially present at a, at a given revision, but it's no longer present at the reference revision, even though the source file is still present, then the warning is an actionable warning. In other words, computing the warning context features requires us to know about the status of warnings in the future because the, the reference revision is, is chronologically in the future of the simulated usage time. And furthermore, this procedure of determining if a warning is actionable or not is the same procedure that was used to determine the ground truth labels of the, of a, of the warnings. And as such, this leaks the ground truth label into the features. This is unrealistic in practice because if we were to deploy the tool in practice, we would not have access to information about a warning in the future. 
and therefore this creates an easier experimental setting. After we removed the features that had the data leakage, we found that our F1 drops from 0.88 to 0.38, and AUC declines from 1.0 to 0.76. Next, we analyzed the, the golden features by switching to a k-nearest neighbors classifier. Prior work has suggested that the use of a golden features worked well with any choice of a machine learning classifier. However, we find a surprising trend when we use a k-nearest neighbors classifier where a lower value of k led to better results. This is unintuitive because typically lower values of k would lead to more or greater amounts of overfitting. We also constructed a dummy classifier where we simply repeated the label from the training data set by, by matching against its class name and bug pattern. And we also found, we surprisingly found that this also worked well. So we investigated the, the, the data in, in more detail. And we find that there's some data duplication where warnings appear in both the training and testing data set. So the reason for this is that wa uh, warnings that, are, that were present in the project be, uh, at the time of the training revision may also be present at the time of the testing revision. The intuition here is that uh, a, a, a given an, a, a false alarm, the warning would not be fixed and therefore the, warning would st the, the same warning would appear at the time of the testing revision as well and therefore it would also appear in the testing data set as well as the training data set. So by, after removing the data duplication, we find further decreases in F1. So F1 has declined from 0.88 to 0.31 and we find that AUC drops from 1.0 to 0.59. If, if we note that AUC remains above 0.5, so this indicates that the golden features have predictive power. Next, we re-implement the warning context features such that it no longer performs a comparison against the future and the, the actionable status of a given warning is simply determined by checking if the, the warning was still open at a given revision. And this increases our F1 to 0.38, but overall, we still underperform the initial re experimental results of 0.88. So the strong experimental results observed in prior work seems to have stemmed from data leakage and data duplication. These issues are very subtle and they were hard to detect. But as we see here, these issues have a significant impact. Next, we, we move on to the second research question and we wish to under, better understand the heuristic that is used as a warning oracle. To begin, we first investigate the effects of the choice of the reference revision. So in, in prior work, a, a period of two years was used to, se uh, to select the reference revision such that uh, the, the reference revision was chronologically in, the f in two years in the future of the testing revision. And we've, uh, we, we, we run the experiments by modifying the amount of time the, between the re testing revision and the reference revision. And by changing the reference revision to, such that it's four years after the testing revision, we see that the actionability ratio has increased from 40% to 54%. So this is notable because the, the actionable warnings were no longer the minority class in the data set. Next, we, we compare the, the labels determined by the heuristic against human labor data. So the, the, the heuristic assumes two things. Firstly, it assumes that, the, that closed warnings are actionable warnings. And it also assumes that open warnings are false alarms. So we, we investigate if the closed warnings were actionable by annotating the, the, the closed warnings. And we find that many warnings were only closed incidentally. For example, in this example, uh, Feinbach's complaints that this piece of code invokes the inefficient long constructor and suggests that it should have instead used the, st the static factory method value of. However, while the warning is closed, the code was changed for reasons that were unrelated to the warning. We see here that the code on the right is the updated code and it no longer has a long object. In other words, the, the code change was unrelated to the, to the issues that fine bugs complain about. And as such, we were unable to determine if the warning was actionable or not. 
Next, we investigate the relationship between open warnings and false alarms. To do so, we can look for projects that have configured a FindBox filter file. FindBox can accept a filter file to suppress false alarms. So this for filters file, filter files are maintained by developers for them to suppress warnings. If the, the developers believe that a particular warning is a false alarm, they could then indicate the warning in this filter file. So this is useful because we can then use this filter file to match against the open warnings to see how many open warnings are matched against the filter. And we find that only 31% of open warnings match the filters, or in other words, only 31% of open warnings were confirmed to be false alarms by the project developers. So for the, the rest of the open warnings, they could be false alarms, but they could also be, be actionable warnings that the developers have not inspected yet. In summary, to answer RQ2, we see that the heuristic allows the, the construction of a large data set, but the, the, the labels generated may not be reliable and they depend on the amount of time between the testing and the reference revision. Furthermore, we see that the, the heuristic incorrectly conflates closed warnings for actionable warnings and open warnings for false alarms. In conclusion, this work was a triumph of open science and we relied very heavily upon the, the data sets and the replication packages that were made available by prior work. In our experiments on the golden features, we found that the experiments suffered from subtle issues such as the data leakage and data duplication. These issues were subtle they were, and, and they were hard to detect, but they had a significant impact. However, our work and experiments do not show that the use of machine learning to filter warnings is impossible or impractical. Instead, our work showed that the golden features were still predictive with an AUC greater than 0 0.5. In our experiments, we use only SVMs and a k-nearest neighbor classifier, and we suggest that a lot more work and analysis is needed to, to, uh, to better understand the golden features and the use of machine learning to, to filter warnings. We also looked at the heuristic-based warning oracle, and we see that they enable the generation of a large data set but the, the, the labels derived through the heuristic do not agree with human oracles. This has implications for future work. We see the need for more manually labeled data as a benchmark data set is essential for charting research direction. We also see the need for methods that can address the lack of labeled data as labeling data can be expensive. Our work also shows the importance of a deeper analysis of experimental results and both qualitative and quantitative analysis are important. Finally, our work was a replication study, and we call for the need for more replication studies. Replication studies can present new insights into existing work, as well as highlight opportunities and challenges for future work. That's all for this presentation. Thank you for your time.